little bit more about some of these ideas as well as debriefing the midterm. And we'll get more into some of these concepts on Friday as well, especially since we don't have any new readings and we can explore some of these concepts in a little bit more detail. So what I want to do now is go to the midterm exam. And um, as I'm working through this, um, I'm going to kind of talk through the questions. They're a little bit um, more tricky among them. Um, and then if there are specific questions that you'd like me to go over or uh, anything like that, uh, I'm happy to do so. Uh, and if there's anything that I went over in the midterm uh, or didn't cover that you want to uh, check in about, like there's a question, why did I get this wrong? Why did I get the score that I did? Uh, please let me know. So overall, I think people did really well on the exam. The average score was in kind of the B, B plus range, which is really good. Um, so the score is a total of 200 points, 100 for the short essay and 100 for the multiple choice. The highest score in the class was 100%. In fact, there were multiple 100%, so fantastic work. Um, so, um, you know, if you got 100%, that's fantastic. Um, might want to keep it a little quiet so people don't blame you for setting the curve, uh, but up to you. Um, so, let's talk through these questions in a little bit more detail again. If just about everybody got those right, um, then I'm not going to go over it, but if you would like me to cover any of these questions, feel free to cut me off, uh, raise your hand on there. Uh, raise your hand on the So uh, this thing here is about Jenna talking to James. It goes back to the transactional model, which is one of the models that I asked you to look at for a short essay question. Remember that the transactional model typically involves uh, the uh, sender who's encoding the message, right, or uploading, a receiver who's decoding the message. Uh, there's also noise, right, which are the environmental factors and things going on in the background that can distort the message, right? So as you were listening to that video earlier, that like be a dumb dumb thing might be noise uh, from understanding the video. Uh, noise can also be psychological, physiological, like you're distracted, you're having a hard day, you have headaches, and so on. Uh, and then feedback is the acknowledgement that somebody else has in response to your message, right? So if James is nodding his head, then that's feedback. That is how he's responding to Jenna's message. So feedback's the best answer here as a response. Decoding would instead be um, the process of um, getting like, the cognition of the message, right? So James understanding the message and listening to the message would be decoding. James choosing to provide this nonverbal confirmation, the nodding of the message, that's the of your feedback. So, uh, one of the things we brought up earlier on in the class was the transactional model and some of those individual parts. So I'm happy to go back um, to kind of showing those parts in a little bit more detail. Those would include the kind of like encoding, decoding, So um, here is this idea of the abstraction ladder. Right, so the ladder ranges from really broad in general to really specific. So we use like a physical example of a ladder to say, okay, thing versus computer mouse or uh, office cable, right? So abstraction refers to how specific or general something is. Syntactic rules would refer more to the ways that things such as spelling, grammar, and so on would be utilized as them. So um, this was a trickier question for folks. Uh, Dre's knowledge about other cultures, right? And this goes back to our discussion about different forms of cultural intelligence. So cognitive is the best answer here because cognitive is the information, like the raw data and material that you have that allow you to understand another culture, right? So cognitive is kind of, as we talked about in class, like the library or the encyclopedia that you have that allows you to access and gain information. 
Metacognitive is not the best answer here because metacognitive is more about how you're using the information that you have in order to engage with another culture. So an example like this, right, uh, Dre saying, I understand that in this culture the elders eat first, so I'm going to avoid eating first, might be a way that he's applying and using that knowledge, right? So metacognitive is thinking about your thinking, or thinking about the knowledge you have and how you intend to use that. Since this question is asking more about just the knowledge that Dre has, uh, cognitive would be the best answer here. Bonnie's example here is dismissing, right? Dismissing, you have high self-esteem, but you don't necessarily value other cultures as highly. So that would be the best answer to this question. A preoccupied style means you care about other people, but you don't feel good about yourself. You're like waiting to hear back from somebody like a text. Secure means that both you and the other person have a good uh, level of self-esteem. You feel good about the relationship, and you feel better about yourself. Flattery, apologies, and self-descriptions. Uh, so this is, uh, these are examples of impression management, right? We manage our impressions by speaking highly about other people, by uh, describing who you are on something like a social media profile and so on, right? The Johari window is the quadrant of different parts. Uh, so the hidden self, the public self, and so on. And social penetration theory are different layers of disclosure that we might do over time. So these are direct examples of forms of impression management, which would be the best answer here. A text sent to a group of five people would not be interpersonal communication uh, because interpersonal communication is primarily dyadic, right? It's a dyad or pair of people who are talking to each other. So it's mostly two people. There are some times where it can extend maybe two, three, or so people, but generally speaking, a text to a larger group, like a group of five, would not really fit under interpersonal communication. But one-on-one, -on -one, it can be online, it can be face-to-face. -face. Uh, a Zoom meeting like that would be uh, interpersonal communication. This true-false question regarding tone of voice, right? So tone of voice is non-verbal. The difference here is that verbal communication is about words and language that we use. So verbal communication could be spoken, it could be written. Uh, Nonverbal communication is about how you say it. So it's like how you deliver or get a pizza, right? You use an app, uh, you have somebody go get it, you pick it up yourself. Uh, so something like tone of voice is one of the styles of nonverbal communication that we talked about. Uh, so the way that you're accenting or highlighting parts of a sentence, uh, the way that you're emphasizing certain words, uh, vocalix is one major part of nonverbal communication, using things such as your tone of voice, your pitch, and so on. So even though it comes out of your mouth, it's the way that you say it that's the nonverbal component. Culture's norms are not written or hard-coded, right? Culture's norms are the unwritten rules, the things that um, you just do as a member of culture, the things that make you seem like an outsider if you don't do those things. So for instance, if you're going into a house um, and you're walking around with your shoes, and it's customary in that home to take off your shoes when you go inside, uh, they're typically not going to have a sign that says, take off your shoes. It's a norm or a rule that we're supposed to do. Taxonomy does include critical listening, also things like appreciative listening and so on. Listening for comprehension, which is toward the bottom. So the short essays. Uh, so. Uh, I had a few folks take a stab at these. I thought the responses to this outside reading prompt were really good. So um, I had a lot of people pick Nasarima uh, and contrast it with something like the Internet Friends article, right? The Nasarima article is about culture and how we talk about cultural outsiders. The Internet Friends article is about the ways that we created and changed our relationships using uh, online spaces under COVID. And then um, the um, Zoom meeting one was about why we lose things like nonverbal cues when we're using apps like Zoom. So there were some good contrasts here. I wanted just some key ideas and explanation, and then showing both the similarities and differences with these approaches that. This culture question. Uh, so people did a good job about defining culture, 
I think the trickier part of this question was collective self-esteem, right? So remember that collective self-esteem is about more than just how you value yourself, but also how you value yourself in relation to a culture. So cultural self-esteem can include things such as your membership esteem, um, how well you value the group itself, and how well you see yourself as a member of that group. The six spectrums of culture, um, so face work would not be one of the six spectrums, but those would include things such as individualism versus collectivism, um, short versus long-term time orientation, and so on. People who identify one of those spectrums, masculine and feminine, did a good job of talking about that here. This question is about intrapersonal communication, uh, not interpersonal communication. It tried to be as clear as possible there, and most folks did a great job here in defining interpersonal communication. You can do a lot of things in terms of its ability to uh, help you to understand and organize your thoughts. I really like the ideas people share here about disclosure, about rehearsing, practicing, and putting together your ideas. These were some really good insights, and I appreciate you sharing. And then, as we mentioned, right, the transactional model of communication is that approach that we addressed in class that talked about the different ways that we can encode, decode, and process the information that we have every day. Um, so this also helps us to understand this model in action. Ambiguity oftentimes emerges through the role that noise plays throughout the communication process. So um, again, all told, the short essay portions I think went really well. Um, and those were some of the general things that I was looking for uh, in order to do well in those. Does anybody have any questions on the short essay or about the uh, midterm exam in general at this point? If you're looking through um, you know, your score and your feedback, including your written comments from me, and you're noticing questions or issues that come up, um, I'm happy to talk through that more with you. Um, I know that we're about out of time, so I'm just going to mention some of the things that we'll get into more um, on Friday. So the discussion group already did a great job of describing these four key theories, right? uses and gratifications theory. It's about why we choose to engage in media. It's kind of like picking out the media we choose, like in a grocery store. Social presence theory is the idea that nonverbal communication plays a really huge role. We're in a big Zoom meeting, right? It can be really hard for us to pick up on information. Media richest theory is the idea that media can convey really good information. It's kind of like having noise canceling headphones and really focusing on the music because you have other stimuli that are missing. Then social information processing theory, as the discussion group did a great job of talking about, might include a lot of games like World of Warcraft um, and other types of titles where you're engaging socially with other people. So I thought the group did a great job of talking about some of these theories and applying them to communication. Those are just a couple extra examples to help us understand these elements. And again, we'll get into this more on Friday. So um, continue to prepare on your essay. Uh, next, next Wednesday will be the last time to turn in your rough draft or outline for this essay. Let me know if you have any other questions related to the midterm exam, um, and then we'll continue to get into the role of mediated communication. No new me reading for Friday. We'll get into this topic in a little bit more detail. So go ahead and pass forward your uh, prompt for today, or email that to me if you haven't.